below. Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Roku, and News Center Main app users. I'm Hannah Deneen. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. We're broadcasting online because NBC football coverage is running through our 6 p.m. newscast. But before we get to today's top headlines, a look at this incoming ice storm. Meteorologist Mike Slifer has been tracking the storm all week. We've been talking about this since last week, really. Mike's out on the weather deck with us tonight. Mike, it was so warm out today, it's hard to believe we're now talking about ice. I didn't think that I would be standing out on the weather deck without, you know, heavy winter coats in January, but here we are. It's warm. It was warm out all day. We had some records. We'll talk more on that in a second. Let's talk about current temperatures, though. This uh, helps to set the stage for what's to come later on. It's currently 50 degrees in Portland right now, 60 in Sanford, 52 in Waterville and Bangor, 46 in Holton, down to 36 now in Caribou. And you see that line of colder air, it spreads through the Allagash and uh, starts to dip south closer to Greenville. Well, that's all on the way. So we've got a winter storm warning that's going to go into effect later on tonight. An ice storm warning for Bangor metro area and down east Maine, as well as a winter weather advisory right along the coastline. And there's our moisture. We've got some rain showers starting to roll on through uh, with the northern part of Maine and the county dealing with some snow and some mixing already. And so this steadily sinks south overnight and brings the cold air with it. So you may be asking yourself, what's the best way to stay up to date as things become a bit worse overnight and into our Sunday? Well, anytime, anywhere, you can always track the forecast. And uh, the best way to do that is to do it right from the palm of your hand. You can download the News Center main app. It keeps you up to date with whatever is headed your way. Be sure to download it and sign up for alerts. And this, of course, will help to keep you informed. And the reason why this is so important in a situation like this is the potential for icing means the potential for power outages, which means you can't get us on TV. So it's a good thing to have in your hand. We're going to have more information on the forecast coming up in just a little while. Police are investigating a shooting on River Road in Caribou. It happened early this morning, and police say the suspected shooter is still on the run. Police are trying to find 39-year-old Adrian Covington in connection with the incident. Police describe Covington as a heavyset black male who is more than six feet tall. They say he may be driving a white 2003 Chevy Tahoe with main veteran plate 6094 a two. anyone who encounters the suspect or vehicle is asked to not approach it and to immediately call police. We will update you on air and online as more information becomes available. Police say three people have been arrested following an early morning shooting incident in Lewiston. It happened just before 3 a.m. in the area of Walnut Street and Pierce Street. New Center Maine's Clay Gordon was at the scene all morning and brings us a first hand look. There were some gentlemen out in the streets arguing, three loud pops, and then it sounded like fireworks opened up. A fight turning into a shootout. Zanna Lebrun was woken up to gunfire right outside of her apartment. So this is your bedroom? Um, this one here, and this is my daughter's room here. So this is your daughter's room? Yes. And that's a bullet hole right in between? Yes, sir. Like at least 40 to 50 shots fired, and people scattering and running everywhere, and then a lot of police. Police swarming the scene, guns drawn after some of the suspects were sheltering inside this apartment building on Walnut Street. Back. Back. Two people surrendered and came out of the building. Others trying to check on family inside were taken into custody for trying to get past police. Hours later, tactical officers were seen evacuating families with young children. Even after the standoff was resolved, the investigation is now only beginning. In Lewiston, Clay Gordon, New Center, Maine. Senator Susan Collins says she's been working with a fairly small group of Republican senators to make sure witnesses can be called in President Trump's impending Senate impeachment trial. Collins has said current Senate leaders like Mitch McConnell and Chuck Schumer need to get together and arrange for a fair process like the leaders did 20 years ago during the impeachment process of Bill Clinton. For some time now, Senator Collins has said she is open to the idea of new witnesses for the trial and now she says she is working with others to make that happen. I am 
working with a group of Republican senators and our leaders to see if we can come to an agreement on some language that would be in the initial resolution setting out the uh, parameters of the trial in the Senate that would include an opportunity for the House to call witnesses and the President's counsel uh, to also call witnesses. Senator Collins would not say how many GOP lawmakers she's been working with. A new center main viewer sent in this video of a tractor trailer truck off I-95 between Millinocket and Holton today. The road was coated with ice from freezing drizzle overnight. That's according to driver reports in the area. And new center Maine's meteorologists say temperatures this morning were near freezing in northern Maine. Tonight, icy roads are a concern in a large part of the state. The Maine Department of Transportation says it will start prepping tonight for tomorrow's storm. The Maine DOT will have overnight crews monitoring the conditions in the southern part of the state and says it will adapt to whatever the weather brings. The DOT advises people to stay off the roads so crews can get their work done. To be prepared to react to whatever Mother Nature throws our way. Um, it's what we do. We're used to it, but we're going to be keeping an extra close eye on the way conditions are, the way they're changing, and then we're going to react appropriately. We will have more information from Maine DOT tonight on your late night report at 11. Central Maine power crews are prepping ahead of tomorrow's ice storm as well. It's expected there will be messy roads and outages and CMP has ordered all of its line crews to report for duty early tomorrow morning. The crews will address the problems, the possible damages caused by freezing rain and ice. CMP says it has been coordinating preparation efforts with the Maine Emergency Management Agency, county emergency management agencies and local municipalities to better understand restoration priorities and address any safety concerns. And CMP has some tips for you ahead of the storm. It says you should make a storm kit with candles, matches, first aid supplies, flashlights, and a battery operated radio. Also stock up on batteries ahead of the storm. Charge all mobile devices. And lastly, fuel up your car. You can also sign up for text alerts online at cmpco.com or text STATUS to 267-898. Now time for a quick break. Here's Ryan Breton with a explainer on how to get weather alerts sent straight to your phone. Your full forecast is right after this. On the new Center Main app, you can receive weather alerts the second they're issued. Here's how you can set it up. Just open the app, go to the upper right hand corner and click on the settings button. Then this screen will open up. You want to click on notification settings. That'll take you to this screen and then click on weather and severe weather alerts. From there, you can set up your hometown, your default location for these warnings. In this case, Portland, Bangor, or you can even go in and add your own zip code. And then right when a warning or alert is issued for your town, you'll get it on the app. Next up, choose the type of warnings you want. Click on severe weather alerts and then this will open up. Watches and warnings is the default, but you can expand that to any statement advisory watch or warning or just warnings, depending on the number of notifications you want to receive. And remember, you can always get the latest News Center Maine weather forecast by clicking on weather at the bottom of the screen, scrolling down. You can get the seven day and video forecast right there. Again, it's all on the new Center Main app. You can customize it for your location and receive as many watches, warnings, or advisories as you want. I'm New Center Main meteorologist Ryan Breton. So everyone, of course, has a lot of questions about what we can expect tomorrow, and that's what we have meteorologist Mike Slifer for. Yeah, you know, uh, we as a team have put in a ton of work on this forecast. We've been talking about this ice storm since last weekend. Yeah, last weekend was the first time that we saw the signals for it, mm -hmm. um, and our text thread between the five of us has just been fun, to say the least. <laughs> yes. Um, 
And so, I mean, it's hard to even talk about ice when you had a day like this. These are the high temperatures that we reached today. That's we saw temperatures well into the 60s through parts of Maine. It's super impressive just how warm we were. 61 in Freiburg, 62 in Sanford, 63 in Portland. Um, and we will watch temperatures drop back from the north to the south tonight. We see 39 in Caribou. All of this cold air is going to settle on in. So uh, just expect things to gradually get colder as the night goes on. There were some 70 degree readings to our south. It did make it to 70 at uh, Logan International today in Boston. So impressive to see that much warmth. Some spots were more than double what the average is for this time of year, uh, including Portland. Bangor made it to 55. We ended up with some records for both uh, Portland and Bangor. We saw 54 was the old record in Portland. We made it to 63, so nine degree difference. Pretty impressive. Bangor, the old record, 52 made it up to 55. Also impressive. That's a three degree gap. Usually when you get these record type situations, you get close or you tie it or beat it by one degree. So to see such big margins uh, and just how warm we were really goes to show this was a pretty impressive pattern that we had set up. Current radar shows that we've got some snow showers across northern Maine and we've got some rain showers starting to mix in. Here's our whole system. It loops all the way back to the Great Lakes region. Some snow around Chicago right now. Some thunderstorms through parts of Kentucky, Ohio and West Virginia. And things are going to likely be a bit active uh, across parts of uh, the, the Midwest and into Appalachia tonight and into tomorrow. And southern New England actually could see some thunderstorms too. Unlikely that we see thunderstorms here, I think. But take a look at what's going on. We've been watching that cold air sink further south. Originally, it was just the Allagash dealing with the snow, and it just keeps going uh, further south. So we'll be watching that closely. And take a look at the rain here. We've got some rain falling through the Katahdin region right now, and we will end up with more rain as that sinks south. And eventually, we end up with the transition to freezing rain and sleet. So this is where we run into issues. By 7 o'clock tonight, we start to see that moisture further south. Here's the mixing. We'll keep the mixing going, and this is where we run into issues. That's where we end up with our sleet. That's where we end up with our freezing rain. That's where we end up with our issues. And you'll notice that the cold air expands and just pushes south overnight. So along the coastline by about 4 o'clock in the morning, still near 60 degrees in Portsmouth, 43 in Portland, down to about 32 in Augusta, so right on that freezing line. And we see 29 in Waterville, 29 in Bangor. This is where we'll start to see that ice stick to things like tree branches and power lines, and that's going to be from Rangerly all the way to Callis and to the down east coastline through parts of Washington and Hancock counties. So this is going to be rather widespread. The cutoff line for snow to ice is going to be near Millinocket, maybe a little bit farther south, closer to Lincoln. Uh, we'll see where exactly that line sets up, but north of that is where you can expect snow. Caribou, Holton going to see some snow. Presque Isle, Fort Kent dealing with snow and things are uh, going to be active through the morning hours, especially tomorrow. We start to see the cold air rush toward the coastline by about 9 or 10 o'clock in the morning. Maybe some slick spots developing in the Portland metro area and through parts of Cumberland and York counties. But overall, the icing concern right along the coastline, even into the mid coast, is not quite as impressive as what we see to the north. I think to the north and through central Maine is where we have the best chance for power outages. And we do clear things out pretty quickly tomorrow. Let's talk a quick second about how this all works. The cold air undercuts the warm air, so the ice crystals melt in the warm air and become regular rain. If there's enough cold air, it refreezes as sleet and falls as ice pellets. If not, it falls as a liquid raindrop and freezes on contact to the cold surface below. And this is what we're expecting, about a quarter to a half inch of ice for the Bangor metro area. Cuts off right around Greenville and just south of Katahdin and Millinocket. And there's still some mixing that takes place near Lewiston and Augusta. I imagine some isolated issues could arise, especially near Auburn into Lewiston. Uh, we'll be watching that very closely too. And then for southwestern Maine, it's mostly just rain. Northern Maine, it's mostly snow. And we actually got a uh, report in today out of Bethel that it felt like uh, a little bit like a spring day for people who are out cross country skiing. But overall, there is a base of snow. So for the winter sports lovers, that's the good news. Marine forecast shows seas about 7 to 10 feet tomorrow. Southeast wind transitions to northwest as the day goes on, about 15 to 20 knots, becoming 10 to 15 knots. Seven day forecast shows tomorrow is the messiest day. We're partly cloudy Monday and Tuesday and much closer to normal for this time of year as far as temperatures go. Maybe some isolated snow showers Wednesday with some mixing Thursday. Quiet to end off the week and quite cold. Forecast high temperatures 
are only in the 20s and teens for Friday and into Saturday. And I don't want to get ahead of ourselves right now, but the models are showing maybe a chance at some more snow next weekend. Okay. So let's get through tomorrow before we start talking about that. But our pattern definitely becomes colder and more active as we get into the second half of January. I don't think we'll be talking about record warmth anytime soon mm -hmm. again. So if you liked that, uh, you got to enjoy it today. But is, is that your policy? You, you don't talk about the next major storm that's going to hit us until we've dealt with the most pressing one? <laughs> Generally speaking, yes. I don't want people to, uh, you know, be concerned about what's going yep. on so far in advance because tomorrow is something that we got to keep our eyes on. And I really liked that precipitation chart that you showed, kind of how this happens. That's Thanks. really interesting. So we want to also mention, as expected, New Center Maine crews will be following the ice storm closely. We'll have team coverage in multiple parts of the state starting at 6 a.m. tomorrow morning. You can tune in on air or online anytime for the latest storm coverage and stay connected, of course, through the New Center Maine website and mobile app. Thank you for tuning in online tonight. You can catch us uh, tonight again at 11. That will be airing on television. Have a great night, everyone.